Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I wish to thank the Africa Economic Zones Organization for inviting me to speak to you today at this sixth annual meeting. Now, it is hard to believe that one year has passed already since I addressed you at your fifth annual meeting last year. Last year, the COVID-19 pandemic put African economies underwater as GDP growth rate declined by minus 2.1%, the lowest in two decades. African economies are showing resilience and are bouncing back. GDP growth rate is projected to rise to 3.4% in 2021. Now, I am very optimistic about Africa. This is because the fundamental value proposition of Africa remains very strong. Now think of the following three points. First, consumer and business expenditures are projected to reach $6.7 trillion by 2030. Second, with over 50 countries harmonizing tariffs and rules and standards, the African continental free trade area will soon become the largest free trade area in the world since the establishment of the World Trade Organization. Third, Africa has an estimated $30 trillion worth of natural resources, one of the wealthiest in the world. Now, unlocking this vast potential is critical for more rapid economic growth, world creation, and of course, creating millions of jobs badly needed for the continent's rapidly growing youth population. For this reason, and for this to happen, Africa must rapidly industrialize, address its infrastructure challenges, and develop more competitive regional and global value chains. Special economic zones have played major roles in making such developments happen for the past of the world. According to the OECD, special economic zones are responsible for exports worth $3.5 trillion annually. That's equivalent to about 20% of the world's global trade in goods. Industrial policies, such as the special economic zones that enhance manufacturing, have helped the rapid diversification of Asia's exports. Asia's exports were worth $6.8 trillion in 2019 largely made up of manufacturers. But Africa's total merchandise trade was worth only $997 billion in 2018, mainly made up of what? Exports of its natural wealth as commodities. Ladies and gentlemen, manufacturing helped Europe to rebuild rapidly from the ruins of the Second World War. And more recently, Manufacturing empowered China to become the second largest economy in the world. So, manufacturing has the potential to lift millions out of poverty and dramatically improve the quality of life for the people of Africa. My message today to you is clear. Africa must rapidly industrialize. The African continental free trade area provides an excellent opportunity to promote the formation of strong regional value chains that will allow African producers to expand into their own proverbial backyards and trade in semi-finished and finished value-added products. To this end, the African Development Bank is supporting the development of special agro-industrial processing zones that will help Africa unlock its food and agribusiness potential and expand its own share of the continent's food and agribusiness market that will be worth $1 trillion by 2030. The special agro-industrial processing zones will enable farmers, agricultural producers, processors, aggregators, 
and distributors to work together in contiguous locations of comparative advantage, lowering transaction costs and sharing business development services to boost productivity and enhance competitiveness. The development of infrastructure is critical for lowering the costs and enhancing the competitiveness of Africa. With massive investments by the African Development Bank, Africa is being rapidly connected, opening up huge opportunities for economies. Over the past six years alone, the African Development Bank has invested over 10 billion US dollars in infrastructure, including seaports, airports, roads, highway corridors, digital infrastructure, energy, water, and sanitation. Today, the Nakala Raid and Road Corridor connects Mozambique, Malawi, and Zambia, boosting trade and reducing transport costs by 15 to 25 percent. The Kasungula Bridge now connects Botswana, Zambia, and ultimately the Democratic Republic of Congo, reducing waiting time from 14 hours to just one hour. The bank has invested heavily in the development of ports to ease maritime transport, including ports in Morocco, Togo, and Namibia, as well as the modernization of airports in Morocco and Ghana, which are all helping connectivity and integration. And the bank has launched a 20 billion US dollar desert to power program that will help to turn the Sahel region of Africa into the world's largest solar zone and provide electricity for 250 million people. Now, this will allow 11 countries to have electricity to power industries and to support special economic zones. The African Development Bank will continue to strongly support critical infrastructure that will expand opportunities for the development of economic zones in Africa to fully unlock the economic potential of African economies. Ladies and gentlemen, we must build more special economic zones. We must connect the economic zones with infrastructure. We must use special economic zones and critical infrastructure to unleash the industrial manufacturing capacity and the competitiveness of Africa. The African continental free trade area must become a zone that hums with sounds of industrial machines, cognitive robots, and workers all working to add value to everything that Africa produces. Then, Africa will move from exporting raw materials to industrial manufacturing with regionally and globally competitive value chains adding value to all its resources and unleashing jobs for millions of you. Now, that is what I call success for Africa. Now, let's make it happen. Thank you very much.